Hello and welcome to the Thursday, September 24th, 2020 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Xavier was out hunting again and is sharing with us, well, what he brought back home. One item was an interesting malicious Word document. What was sort of special about this Word document was not just that it, well, installed PowerShell on the machine. It also updated itself with content pulled from a website. The idea here is that after the user opens the document and of course provides it with access to run macros, the content of the document will be updated with content that that's appropriate for the victim's environment. So for example, it could download content in a particular language, which is the preferred language of the victim, or maybe something that's related to the particular victim's business or industry. This of course will make it less likely that a victim will report this malicious document to the security team. They're more likely going to believe that this was a legitimate document. Well, and are you done patching all of your Windows systems for CVE 2020-1472, the famous zero logon flaw and uh, probably planning to take the rest of the week off because there's nothing else to do. Well, uh, you may need to reconsider. Turns out that Samba, the open source implementation of the Windows protocol may be vulnerable as well. Samba is implementing as part of its suite, the NetLogon remote protocol, which of course is the vulnerable protocol here. Now, turns out that back in version 4.8, which was released over two years ago, Ago in March of 2018, the default setting for uh, the logon part was fixed uh, to use a secure net logon channel. The setting for this is server s channel equals yes. So that's basically a change that was made back then. But if you, for whatever reason, change this setting, then you are vulnerable. Now, in addition, Samba did release an updated uh, version of a Samba version 4.10.18, if you're still running the 4.10 branch, up to version 4.12.7, if you're on the newer 4.12 branch. This will ultimately fix uh, the vulnerability. You're no longer depending on the S channel uh, setting, but uh, still, so you definitely should update to the latest version of Samba and then double check that client S channel is set to yes. No and auto are not sufficient and leave you vulnerable. Now, all the exploits at this point, of course, focus on Windows, haven't seen a sort of Linux specific uh, exploit. Samba is often used on network storage devices that of course run Linux as their operating systems. Mac OS uses its own implementation of SMB, used to use Samba way back in the day, but hasn't been doing so for quite a few years now. Not clear if that implementation is is also vulnerable to the zero logon flaw. And Google released a new update for Google Chrome, fixing 10 different vulnerabilities. Nothing outrageous here in this release. So just let Google auto update do its thing and maybe double check that it worked correctly and you're all up to date. And I don't know if I had mentioned it this week yet. So this is your weekly reminder. Uh, please do not never ever expose any of these network storage devices to the public internet. Yet another reason to do so, QNAP NAS devices, according to Bleeping Computer, are currently being affected by the HLocker ransomware. It's not clear how this particular ransomware sample made it onto the device or how the ransom is supposed to be paid. So maybe it's just destructive. As far as vulnerabilities go, quite often it's really just a weak password that is being used to break into these devices if they're exposed or one of many web application vulnerabilities. 
And well, that's it for today. And just as a reminder, you know, if you could uh, please let your friends know about this podcast, tweet about it or post about it on some other social media or just uh, leave a good review uh, with your favorite podcast distribution platform. And uh, yes, uh, as of uh, two weeks ago, I believe, Amazon is uh, putting out podcasts as part of his music service. And this podcast is available via Amazon as well as via Amazon's Alexa Flash Briefing. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.